Nin, welcome. We're happy to host you again at APOS this year. Thank you. Last year, we spoke a lot about your work in Korea. And this year, it seems like you've been based in Tokyo for the past year. And we really want to focus on Japanese entertainment. And looking at Asia as a whole, your remit consists of the entire region next India. How does Japan fit into Netflix's goals in the region? Japan is one of, as a market, it's one of the most uh, important market within APAC in terms of the size of the business, uh, the content consumption, but not to speak of all the great creatives that comes out of that country. Uh, so I would actually say the, the fact that I have uh, relocated myself to Japan really shows that the amount of effort that we really want to put into Japan. And I, I've started my uh, career really building the team uh, and the slate from scratch for Korea and for Southeast Asia and Australia. And now I think Japan is where I'm trying to put a lot of focus to help the, the Japan team really realize their um, vision uh, to work even better with the creators and bring uh, great stories to our audiences there. When we talk about Japanese culture, we always talk about, you know, it's, it's a relationship base, it's a trust base. And it's not, that doesn't only apply to the business relationship. As we build our relationship with the consumers, a lot of it is very much trust-based. And what that means is our members and audience, whether it's on screen or behind the screen, they want to see, if they're investing time and money, they want to make sure that they are investing their time with somebody who know can deliver what they want. So that somebody that ha already has a trust is really important. It doesn't only limit to Japanese content. It, it applies to Hollywood content as well. And with that, it opens a very, uh, it, it becomes difficult for some of the new talents and up and coming talents to really break through. Well, it is great because our fans, once you build that trust, the loyalty is just very deep. But it does make it difficult for these newcomers to actually build that trust with the consumers. And, but we're really looking at that as an opportunity for us to provide something that is differentiated. Uh, I think that is why uh, some of our shows like A Sanctuary where on-screen talent, the behind, the, the creators are very new. And they were able to, they were able to sort of innovate the storytelling. Uh, and our director from A First Love or Zom 100, a lot of our great storytellers are up and coming. And then we're, we're trying to use that uh, uh, as more of an opportunity for us to find something that uh, provides something that's differentiated. Japan actually has a very long history of entertainment. Uh, I think even one of the longest in this part of the region. And because of that, there are so, so much of a volume that comes out from the industry. Uh, and there are innovations that happens from time to time. Uh, but there are sometimes it's, Again, going back to the trust of giving something that they already want and they know that they'll love, sometimes the differentiated storytelling becomes slightly difficult. And I think that's where we're trying to sort of get in to find what that is. And, and we've sort of identified some of the areas where we know that our audiences will want more of. And that has really, uh, while we, it's really important for us to build that diverse slate to provide a variety of like must-watch content. Uh, we really focused a lot, we tried to focus a lot on some of the, the character-driven dramas like Sanctuary or Naked Director, some of the romance, uh, reviving the, 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 the great era of the romance or the Japanese titles, uh, like through shows like First Love or Let's Get Divorced, uh, or some of the uh, really leveraging the great IPs that they have in Japan through providing some of the sci-fi stories like Alice in Borderland. How do you balance your slate? Because something like Alice in Borderland, high budget concept series, um, how do you look at sort of balancing it in terms of volume especially? Because sometimes it feels like a big title like Alice in Borderland from Japan is a lot less in volume than Korean dramas, which are, you know, there's several titles every month. It's really, it's really about you know, in, in the content business, I think everybody here is more expert in it. It's really about balancing the size of the audience with the right level of uh, investment. And I think if, if you look at shows like uh, Alice in Borderland, like the fact that we are, um, this morning we've announced the renewal of Alice in Borderland to season three, 
and you really show the success of uh, production and the story at that scale. And what we're really trying to do is we will never compromise the pleasing our members in Japan, even with the bigger scale shows like Alice in Borderland, but at the same time, with that level of scale, it is really important us to make sure that we find audiences outside of Japan who can actually enjoy Alice in Borderland. And Alice in Borderland, Borderland has really been that show. Uh, it's our most viewed Japanese content uh, on Netflix. And the worldwide audience are discovering Japanese li live action through a show like uh, Alice in Borderland. So it's really making sure that we find the balance in right-sizing the audience with the right uh, size of the investment. If we are able to make something that our Japanese anime fans love, that's what our global anime fans really want. It's, it's the, the, Japan has been the holy grail of the anime fans that they really aspire uh, and they really love the culture that is behind a lot of these manga and anime that comes out from Japan. So by listening to a lot of our uh, uh, audiences and really what they want. And, you know, anime fans really want specific things. They have a strong preference of what they want, and they have a strong loyalty of what they want. And by listening to them, and there's already an industry that exists in, in anime creative community that they know what these audiences want, and they're so great at already building them. So it's really important to bring shows like Demon Slayer, Spy Family on our service to provide something that they already love, but also to make sure that we leave enough space for something that is different, like uh, the Pluto that we are, uh, we're going to be showing soon. It's, it's based on an IP, Astro Boys, and it has never been turned into an anime before. Uh, On Myoji, which is based on a novel, but and I think we all know about Arcane or Cyberpunk that actually is based on a game IP. So really providing a little more of that room to find different ways of, uh, of delivering what our audiences want. So it, it's really finding balance of both. And I must say, anime is one of the most challenging areas that we're really trying to figure out how to get better in pleasing our members. It is really difficult to do a live action adaptation of manga IP or an anime IP, and because the world behind these IPs, it's, it's very enormous, it's very diverse, and oftentimes, it is not, it is not uh, it's, it's, it's most of the time it's in the fantasy world. And it's really important to figure out in which language or, or in which culture or, or, or in which format it's best to realize the vision of that IP. So one piece, uh, is, is not set in a specific country. It's not uh, about a specific language. So we believe the best version of One Piece could be delivered in an English as an English language show. So our, our team in US actually has been trying to work on the adaptation of uh, uh, One Piece, and they were really, really sort of struggling to really find the essence of that. And One Piece, uh, out of all the IP from Japan, is very unique in that it's still ongoing for the past couple of decades, it has more than 150 sort of volumes of books, and, and it has so many of the characters, and the thing about the manga IP is it's really important to understand the principle of the character's behavior, and how the main uh, character interacts with the characters around them to help them grow. And when, when our US team was struggling, it would, we realized it was really important for us to stay really connected to the original author, uh, Oda Sensei, to make sure that we do justice to the show. So that's where our uh, team from Asia, from Japan and Korea came in, to really partner with our US team to deliver a live action adaptation that is really true to the essence of the IP uh, that can satisfy the One Piece fan, and believe me, One Piece fan are very uh, loud and strong. <laughs> so, and but also at the same time, be able to deliver a show that can appeal to those who actually have not uh, watched or enjoyed the, the original IP before. So it, in, in finding that balance, I think we were situated in, in a great, uh, uh, as a global company, I think this is when I really felt the value of being a truly global, but also connected uh, company. 
I know we say it's in the early days a lot, but unscripted, we're still, we're still in the early days trying to figure out. But what we already know is that unscripted is a category that our, our Japanese audiences really love. If you look at the programming on the linear channel, uh, the 70% of the programming is really unscripted, what the Japanese industry calls variety. So it's really important for us to be delivering a variety of variety programming, unscripted programming. And we have, uh, we have tried many of, uh, you know, the ex revamping a little bit of the existing IP, uh, but we've also tried to find what are some of the differentiated uh, uh, IPs within this unscripted category. And uh, so we're, we're still tr trying to test in many different areas, but we know for now is that our audiences really love the dating reality and a comedy show. We've seen, seen a great signal through shows like Last One Standing and also through shows like Parasaz or Love Village. Uh, so we want to make sure we keep uh, providing, innovating within that space to provide different types, deliver different types of shows in that category, but also make sure we explore and develop other areas as well.